the best news source on YouTube for sure. <laughs> Not afraid to let go. Uh. You decide if you ever gonna let me know. Yeah, suicide if you ever try to let go. Uh. I'm sad and all, yeah. I'm sad and all, yeah. Who am I? Someone not afraid to let go. Uh. You decide if you ever gonna let me know. Yeah. Is the camera on? Hey, what's up, guys? It's Arlene. I'm here with another video, and PewDiePie decides he wants to roast Ninja. <laughs> And a bunch of other stuff and he just talks about some stuff that I thought was real and maybe I should you know get my opinion on since you guys like the last video I did on PewDiePie um, and that video got like 500 views in one day so I'm, I guess I should do more so let's check this out real quick I guess I'm going to jail is the name of this video the sad is funny Logan Paul has an exciting announcement and can pokes be racist this and more in Pew News. I am Gloria Borga. <laughs> the best news source on YouTube for sure. Hello everybody, it's Gloria Borga. Welcome back to Poor <coughs> Oh. <laughs> this dude got a Pew News cup, I can't. That's much better. Oh, have I told you about our new merch? You can buy one. Check out link in description. I think you'll like it. Tastes great. <laughs> I like how the logo is similar to CNN. <laughs> what if they tried to like sue him or something? Just because he made a cup like that. Now let's get into the first news, guys. Nicole Arbor, the smug faced son of a ball, has returned to YouTube with a- You know what? Actually, I want to look up and see on Google if there's actually a cup for that. Um, CNN cup. Oh, they have a store? No way. I'm done, PewDiePie. I'm done. <laughs> that's funny. That that's funny. Another one of her wonderful comedy sketches. Nicola, of course, which last year published a very famous video, Dear Fat People, where she basically conveyed the message that uh, you, you're, it's your own fault, okay? You're just being really lazy. And now she made a video in the same sort of fashion, but about depression. Now, I don't personally give my own opinions here on Pew News. I am biased. Unbiased. I keep getting it wrong. I am completely unbiased. But I think this is great, and I, for one, can't wait for the video, Dear Disabled People. Uh, <coughs> dear Disabled People, uh, it's all in your head. <laughs> Look, you just have to stand up. I can do it. So can you. It's all in your head. Stupid. She uploaded the video. I like your sarcasm, because it's like, it's common sense. You can't tell somebody that something in their head cannot affect them because I know me and my friend were talking about this earlier and she was saying that it felt like she was in prison you know like in prison with depression actually it was playing Fortnite you're living your whole life dedicated to somebody else's thoughts and when they have their own life it makes no sense and I guess you could if you understand if you have something to prove but that doesn't mean anything <laughs> I don't know I, and depression's a real thing too. I don't think people understand that. Like people, it's so easy to dismiss it because people think it's all in your head. Of course, it's in your head, but it's at a, it's at a point where you can't control it. I don't think people understand that. Like it's hard oh, yeah. to get away. Yeah. Um, like um, I've had uh, a few people Snapchat. Snapchat. Like I'm like, like yeah, yeah, I post depressing stuff on my Snapchat because my Snapchat, Snapchat. Let me do what I want. But if I'm being like depressed and everything, I have people saying, oh, just go outside, go for a walk. Like, that's not gonna help me. Okay? My depression is like some, like some disability, kind of. Like, it makes me not want to do anything. Like, I won't eat or anything. Like, it locks me down in bed and takes me prisoner in my own room. Like, my room, to me, is like my own little prison. Yeah, I can leave any time, but I, I physically cannot because I am depressed. Yeah. I don't, I feel completely numb to anything that's outside. 
it, but the only time I feel like happy or whatever is when I'm playing video games. And the way I see it right now, this is what's gonna be my future. Like, I'm not doing this for the money. I'm doing this because this is legit the only thing that makes me happy. This and doing my art is literally the only thing that makes me happy at this time. And it's helping me from not, like, actually, like, going and doing something horrible to myself. Yeah. That I know is gonna hurt others. This is what I want to do with my life. I want to do something that makes me happy. Because I know, oh. like, if I'm not doing this, I'm not going anywhere in my life. Like, yeah. I, I, I know I'm not doing anything else. Yeah. People don't understand that. That's kind of what I've told myself too, you know, like, um, with the, like doing YouTube and like social media, all that stuff. I know I love doing that. There's no possible way for me to do anything else. So I've worked around that and tried to figure out, okay, what can I do to create the means to keep doing this? So I have to work this many jobs. So I have to do all this different stuff, you know, and it's, you know, I finally figured out the game plan in terms of what I'm doing. It's hard for some people to. Uh, but it's like something like, you know, for the longest people are like, you're not doing that. You're not doing that. And then now that I see the results and I see how exactly how to do it, it's 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 so fulfilling because it's like all those people that have something to say about you or where you're going. Now that you finally know where the direction's going, you can kind of pave it out. I feel like that's that's all you're doing. I don't think people have the right to judge you on what you're going to do because if you know what's best for you and you know you like something, you can always expand upon that. You know, and she was telling me about it. People just need to be more considerate, you know. Video saying why depression is all in your head. Only one person can get you out of depression, and that is you. It's all in your head. It's all in your head. Literally. You idiot, it's genetic. <laughs> Nope. Now we are getting a little bit into YouTube gossip territory right now, but I feel like I have to give you enough context because that's really important. So basically, right, Nicole Arbor used to date the bald top 10 guy on YouTube. <laughs> His name was Matthew Santoro, I think. And they used to be together and everyone was like, but why is she dating him? He's so ugly. But she has a really ugly character, so it sort of works out. But then all of a sudden, poof, they broke up and everyone was like, why? And then he made a really crying video saying, oh, uh, she hit me and then Nicole replied well I did not hit her it's bullshit it's not true I did not hit her I did not and then Matthew made a video a few months later saying I am depressed and then now Nicole is making fun of depression because he wants to get back on her ex that's right we dig deep here on Q News I'm done well I can give you guys some context about me since he did some YouTube gossip that people say about me Oh, he fakes his views. Oh, he bought his views. Oh, he's botting or this and that or this. How do he get this many subs and people are still watching? But he's, he doesn't have a lot of people watching. I don't understand. Did he buy his followers on Instagram? This and this. Ah, stop. A lot of people think I bought followers and stuff like that. I'm here to tell you, no, people actually followed me. And sometimes I would unfollow and follow the people who are active. This turns out that... I mean, that's a sucky method, but no, technically I didn't buy any of my followers, I didn't buy anything. I just simply unfollowed and followed people who were active and people who were not. That was a good strategy for me to grow my YouTube channel, and now I'm just finding the data that works well for my channel. And that is how any YouTuber is successful, you know, even Rice Gum, I don't think he bought it. I think he just simply did certain things to gather data that way he knows what he can use to get views it just so happened to be musically kids listen to PewDiePie when he says that every youtuber is successful ever because of their their analytics if you look in analytics it's all in the data I could go in my data and see what videos you guys were specifically like a hey, PewDiePie wrote the analytics and trends for the longest time to get views. Now it's to a point to where it doesn't even matter anymore because he's gotten so much people watching him at this time that no matter what he does, he will he's guaranteed a million views per video because he's grown to that point. He has an audience. So it's, it's more so... I look at it like this. My channel is probably going to end up the same as his. I'm going to gather all these different types of people all over the world. Then when you know when the hammer drops and I'm not that popular anymore, I'm going to have those people who stick by me anyway. And then I will continue to grow 
anyways because of the algorithm. That's just how it works. Once, once the channel gathers up enough data on YouTube and you're posting videos all the time, it doesn't matter that your channel will live forever, I guess in a sense, will make you revenue or royalties forever based off the ads served on the channel. So that's how YouTube works. There you go, in a nutshell, I just told you. Now go become YouTubers, you little bastard. <laughs> no, for real. Nicole, I sort of understand what she's trying to say. Most people go through periods in their life where they are feeling down, and that's not the same as depression. A lot of people already don't think that depression is a real illness with real symptoms, so trivializing it as uh, you're just feeling bad is irresponsible just flat out short-sighted and complete lack of empathy for other people. Just because something worked for you doesn't mean it's gonna work for other people. Same thing with diet. Everyone is different and they react differently to uh, to these things. It's just how it is. You, just because you figured it out something doesn't mean you have the answer for everyone. That's true. That's very true. Just because you figure something out doesn't mean you have the answer for everyone. And people selling these seminars, trying to teach people how to do YouTube or trying to teach them how to do social media, you have to do it yourself because only you can find what works for your channel and for you or that goes for anything in life. What works for you, like your work schedule. No one can truly tell you how to live your life, especially in a democracy because that's not how it works. I'm Gloria Borga, and the next news is very interesting. That's right. Last week, Drake, famous Canadian rapper, played Fortnite, and everyone lost their mind. It was a great scene, but I think you... Wait, at all why did he meme him like that? Me. Apparently, news of success in a recent interview that... Ninja makes 500000 a month playing video games. That is almost as much as I make. Pewds, why are you throwing these shots? <laughs> Whenever there is success in a certain field online, there's always a swarm of people coming afterwards. You have the flies to the pies, the cretins to the sweatins, the maggots swarming to the fine... <laughs> He has no chill right now. It's so funny. Of course, the low life scumbag announced that he's going to oh. do a Twitch live stream as well, which is apparently newsworthy because he gained 200,000 followers without even live streaming. Uh, excuse me, excuse me. Okay, I have 900,000 followers and I never stream on Twitch. Why does no one care about me? If this isn't once and for all, Prove the fact that the media is biased towards me, then I don't know what will. Honestly, <laughs> streamers had some thoughts about this. We had Summit saying that I don't think people should be upset at all about Logan Paul on Twitch. The amount of people he can bring over from YouTube can only be a good thing for their site because there's more people now. And uh, uh, use your business mind on this one. <laughs> This was from, uh, this, low-key, the biz, use your business mind. You know, Philip DeFranco said that too. Philip DeFranco, you're just, don't even get me started on Philip DeFranco. I like his videos, but he's just, he's too much for me sometimes. <laughs> yes, great. Now the people are uh, saying, so Logan Paul is going to start streaming and bring his sh to their Logan, who is Logan Paul? Can someone please tell me who is that? Oh, the guy that filmed a dead body? Who watches him? <laughs> Not me. It is in a female voice. So Logan Paul is going to start streaming and bring his toxic idiot fan base over to tweet. Can't see that doing anything positive for the community. <laughs> They're all kids. They're all kids. They're all kids. It's not important. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters. Stop. Just stop, please. Why do you care? It also showed that uh, Logan is planning to do a Fortnite live stream with rapper Soldier Boy. PC, but I think you, I think you can like link between three systems. Three systems, no, we've got this together. For sure. Why would anyone want to see that? Like, the reason why the Drake Fortnite thing was popular was because Ninja is actually really good at Fortnite, combined with a really popular celebrity, which, in a sense, I don't want to give this credit, but I'm going to do it just for the sake of the local poll. It legitimized the streaming community in a way that hasn't been done before. 
Ah, it hurt to say that. No one's gonna see wanna see these buffoons play. He's so moronic. Why does he think that he can do the same yeah, thing? Yeah, he's basically trying to copy someone else. And there's nothing wrong with copying other people. We do it all the time. Look at Pews copying Philip DeFranco and copying Scarce and copying Drama Alert and copying CNN. <laughs> But it's the way Logan's doing it, it's like forced, you know what I mean? My god, is this what we have come to now in online entertainment? Whatever is popular, everyone else is just going to do? Oh shoot, that's what I've been doing for years, damn it. Ignore the last bit, guys, don't worry about it. Just mug? A mug? Boop, 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 boop. Next news comes from a YouTuber convicted of hate crime for making a Nazi joke. Just hold one, hold on one second, guys. Excuse me, PewDiePie's lawyer? Am I going to jail? <laughs> no, because I am more attractive and more popular? Okay, that makes sense. So what do I do? Just tell everyone that you're really upset about this. Uh-huh, got it. This is absolutely despicable. Why <laughs> I can't with this dude. Anyone would make a Nazi joke is completely beyond me, especially pug related. That's like the lowest of the low. The fact that it was a joke doesn't matter at all. I don't understand these people with these terrible sense of humor. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Count Dracula needs to go to jail. And I'm so glad that this man is put behind bars because now I finally will feel safe at night knowing that this man will not make any more Nazi jokes. Disgusting. Absolutely despicable. Hate crime. Hate crime. Boom. Now I'm going to post about this on social media so that everyone can like me and, and think that I'm actually good even though I have actually no positive qualities about me except shunning other people even though I'm... <laughs> the real question here, I know what you're thinking as well. Why hasn't the punk gone to jail? Why is the punk allowed to keep spreading hate crime? Absolutely. There is truly no justice in this world. For real though, uh, basically, if you haven't seen the video, I don't want to show it because it's probably just going to demonetize this video and it probably is already. Please buy a mug. Uh, but nevertheless, he basically said, uh, I want to get back at my girlfriend while she's away, so I'm going to play a prank on her. So I'm going to teach her dog uh, to be a Nazi, which is the ugliest thing I can think of. That was the pretext of the video. That, that is the context. It was clearly set out to be a joke, and anyone that watched the video will understand that. But you can also take what was taken out of context, which seems to be a, uh, a common theme these days, and completely <laughs> dismay the fact that it was in indeed just a joke. It's supposed to be a joke. You may not find it funny, but that doesn't change the fact of the intent behind it. Ricky Gervais. Yeah, there was intent. About, it was a joking intent behind it. You guys took it way too seriously. Now, we live in a society where free speech is more like if you do anything that triggers any group or type of people because they don't like it, you could possibly go to jail or lose your career or lose a lot of things that help you in life or things like that. Like you can lose something valuable to you. He lost Scare PewDiePie. He didn't go to jail, but this guy, Count Dakula, because he's smaller and probably not more as popular and just, you know, the whole world is already in an identity politics frenzy, he's going to take the fall for it. He has to go to jail. Or probably, I heard he's getting on house arrest, whatever. But it was a joke. Now, do I like Nazi jokes? I don't desire to hear them. If it's funny, I might laugh, but um, anti-Semitism or whatever it is, or I don't even know what it's called. What I'm saying is just try to avoid joking about it because in this day and age, identity politics is, well, ruin your life. You know what I'm saying? Various British comedian uh, tweeted out about this saying, a man has been convicted in UK court of making a joke that seemed, that deemed grossly offensive. If you don't believe in a person's right to say things you might find grossly offensive, then you don't believe in freedom of speech. And that's true. Freedom of speech should be allowed. <sighs> Just like, I don't know. This would have never happened in America. You know? Um, even though, I mean, people would condemn the person probably because of the anti-Semitic joking. But, 
in America, we have something called free speech. It's enforced by a law. We have an actual law. And um, as long as you're not harming anyone physically, and you're just saying a word, no one can condemn you, you know? If you're in the entertainment industry, I mean, they could take your channel down or something. But like I said, just don't joke about it. I have no desire to joke about it, but I'm saying people should be able to joke about something, even if it's offensive. Just, just because people don't like it doesn't mean they can't joke about it. That's what free speech is. Literally being able to say what you want without any consequences. Now, doing things that you want that is not good should have consequences, like doing it, like actually going out and, you know, hurting, you know, Jews because you're in a real life Nazi, but if you're not a Nazi for real and you're just making Nazi jokes, there's context there. It's the intent of being a joke. I think I've beat the free speech, free speech thing to death. Which is so true. Basically, if you're curious why he got convicted, even though we do have yes. freedom of speech, there are a few exceptions to the law. There's a broad sweep of exception, including threatening, abusive, and, and insulting words or behavior intending, or likely to cause harassment, alarm, and distress. What he was convicted for was the 127 Communications Act, which makes it a criminal offense to send online a grossly offensive or an indecent, obscene, or menacing character. There's a lot of people defending this verdict, saying that he deserves to go to jail. Uh, Stuart Perry from The Lad Bible wrote this. That's right, Lad Bible, there's news. <laughs> it's worth noting that while those against political correctness cry that it's only recently that their jokes are now offensive, they've probably always been hurtful. It's just that those at the butt of the joke are now standing up for themselves. Food for thought. Thank you, Stuart Perry. Thank you for showing everyone what a quintessential moral looks like. You're supposed to be a journalist, although it's... <laughs> <laughs> See, he's using political correctness and identity politics to, to secure his motives. It's terrible. Terrible journalist. So biased. I mean, PewDiePie is, but at least it's funny. You're not funny. You're serious. Bad Bible, you're still supposed to be a journalist. Do you understand what you're writing? Do you understand anything at all? What you're saying? Or what you wrote? What the f- <laughs> Yes, Count Dracula is not above criticism. Anyone has the right to speak out against him. People have the right to feel whatever way they want about the video. Like That's how I feel. Like. Anyone has the right to criticize me. People can say I steal content from PewDiePie to react to it. <laughs> People can say I steal content to react to on my channel. Or I make crappy videos. Or sometimes I don't edit my videos. Or sometimes I film them with OBS. The point of this channel, as I've always said, is to start a conversation in the comments and get to know you guys and base that around my content and entertain you at any means possible. It's not, I'm not here to make super great content. I'm not here to make crazy vlogs like Casey Neistat. I'm not here for all that. I'm here to literally build a community. I think that's what people don't understand at all, you know? For the Arlenators for a reason, okay? There's bros from PewDiePie for a reason. There's the, you know, those communities. There's the low gang for a reason, I say it, dislike it, it doesn't matter. The point is that it's not up to the government to decide whether it's a joke or not. It's a really scary thing for any society that the government has that power, in my opinion. That, to me, doesn't mean freedom of speech. We have laws to protect for hate crimes, but they shouldn't cover what is meant as jokes and what clearly isn't set out to be any form of hate, intent, and harm. And anyone that watched the video knows that that's the case. And I think it's the same thing with my original video. Yes, was my video about criticism? Absolutely not. But anyone that watched the video understands that there was no ill intent behind it. But it's so easy nowadays to just take any clip out of context and say, this is hateful, this is not a joke. It's a dangerous act, especially now that the government comes into play. That being said, I already have too many things in common with Count Dracula, so I am... That's why you have to literally create a internet archive of some sort or some type of extra hard drive or archive so that way you can take clips and literally put them on there and pull that video that exact video so one day 
one day someone goes, hey, you did this, and they put it in an article or something, you can pull it out your ass somewhere on your data and be like, hey, this is a full video, watch it all the way through, it will give you some context, and then they can't really criticize you. But let's say they take a clip and then YouTube takes it down and then boom, you're screwed if you have to defend yourself. I'm now going to auction away this pug. That's right. He is a despicable pug that will put me <laughs> into jail. So please, someone take this dog away from me. I do not want him anymore and I don't want anything to do with Count Dracula. Oh, am I boring you? I'm Gloria Borga and this was Pew News everybody. Remember to leave a like. This video is 100% going to like for monetization so I really appreciate it. if you check out the mug. It's I'm out of drink so I don't even know why I try it but uh, <laughs> Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching and peace. Rice gum, he's a good example. You know, you watch him and he's flexing. He doesn't understand. That may enrage something in people like, oh, I don't have what he has and I'm not cool like him and I don't have as many subs as him so I gotta do this and do that. And that's a bad mentality, you know. Um, yeah, that's the sad thing nowadays. Like, people like, people on like the, the younger generation, they're looking up to people like the Paul brothers and Rice Gum, and they're thinking, oh, it's cool to act like a complete cunt to other people. Oh, it's just cool so I can get money, right? Yeah, exactly. And like that's me, horrible. Like, the way I've, gr yeah, I, cause like the way I've grown on YouTube, a lot of people say this and this and that. But I'm I'm kind of growing the same way PewDiePie did. I didn't do anything outlandish. I'm growing slowly, but I, at least I know in my heart that even if I grow slowly, at least people will respect me more instead of these buffoons, you know? Like, it's not always about yeah. money. And I think PewDiePie has kind of like beat that on the head of all these YouTubers. Like, stop showing your money. You're looking like idiots, you know? Stop spending all your money on this crap. And like these kids are gonna grow up one to wear Supreme, but they can't even afford it. You know, it's it, it's kind of sucks.